Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Once Upon a Crescent. Thank you for joining me for season six. I was, uh, just charging up my imagination here. It's the most important part of this podcast. I tell the stories, you imagine them, and we both learn a thing or two about our Dean. Okay, let's get started. Today's story is called The Cash Confusion. The sound of squishy mud delighted Zed as he used his bare hands to dig little holes in the dirt. The cool earth felt so comfortable to Zed. Being in mud was one of his favorite things to do. Zed took out a few marbles from his pockets and lined them up. He used his fingers to flick those marbles gently to aim them right into the holes that he made in the dirt. Zed was enjoying his relaxing backyard playtime after a full morning of homeschooling. Talia, his younger sister, enjoyed her time drawing while Mama finished preparing lunch inside. Zed, Talia, come on inside. Go wash up. Lunch is ready. Come on, Baba wants you two ready and 30 minutes for the library. Today is club day at the Smith Library. The kids were so excited to go to their club meetings at the library today. Zed's club was a Lego club. Talia's club was a drawing one. Since Zed and Talia are homeschooled, they have the early afternoon time to themselves to play, and then they participate in extracurricular activities of their choice. After washing up, the kiddos came to the table stunned at their plates. Wait, Mama, why did you make our favorite foods today? Mama smiled, appreciating the fact that her kids noticed her hard work. Well, I just feel proud of you both. You both are keeping up with your learning and your memorization of the Qur'an. Sometimes it's nice to feel appreciated, right? Zed and Talia both shook their heads in agreement. Talia was already twirling her fork into her spaghetti plate. And Zed was already piercing his favorite type of steak, Wagyu. The kids finished up their lunch in no time. Baba made his way to the room in a rush. Okay, let's go kids. We have to get you guys to your clubs at the library. Baba took a peek at the stove and sighed. Ooh, favorite foods for the kids day, huh? What did you guys do that was so special? Mama smiled. Just cuz. Okay, off you guys go. I hope you all are on time this week. Have fun! The kids gave Mama a big hug before heading out the door. Baba recited the dua for leaving the house. Bismillahi tawakaltu ala Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Alright, good thing there's no traffic at this hour. We'll be at the library right on time. The kids sat in the back seat of the car. They recited the traveling dua. And then immediately played a game of rock, paper, scissors with each other to pass the time. Paper, scissors, shoot! Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Baba was grateful for how well they were getting along. He turned to them and smiled. After some time, Baba stopped at a stoplight and turned around to watch their game of rock, paper, scissors. Aw, Zaid wins this time. Talia, I'm sure you can beat me next. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot! shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Yes! 
Talia exclaimed as she realized she actually did beat her Baba in this quick game of rock, paper, scissors. Baba glanced at the streetlight that was still red. He noticed a stranger approaching their car at this stoplight. Baba looked up to the window to see a man smiling at him. He waved a handful of candy bars at Baba. The man looked very scruffy, with a large, dirty coat hanging off his thin body. He had a little money pouch across his waist. Baba realized that this man was in need. The kids were surprised to see this man balancing himself on crutches. Talia spoke up from behind. Baba, he's missing a leg. Zed gently shushed Talia in hopes of the man not hearing from behind the window. Shh! Baba glanced up to make sure the light was still red. He noticed a line of cars behind him as well. Baba dug into the tiny side drawer next to the steering wheel to find some cash. He took hold of the first bill he saw. It was a $5 bill. Oh, I gotta make this quick right before the light turns green. Baba rolled down the windows. He stuck out his arm and pushed the bill in front of the man. The man took it, nodding his head and stuffing it into his money pouch. Uh, I'll just take three candy bars. That'll be three dollars. I can give you change, sir. Just one moment. Uh, I owe you two dollars. The man unzipped his pouch in a hurry to give Baba his change. Baba shook his head no. No, no, it's okay. Just keep the change. He said frantically, looking at the green light. The cars behind Baba were starting to get impatient. Baba was stopped still at a green light. The cars began to honk to signal Baba to move along on this green light. The man in crutches handed Baba three candy bars in such a hurry. Baba took hold of the candies carefully and rolled up his windows and sped forward. Phew, I feel so rushed. Baba exclaimed as he stretched his hand back to give the kids the candy bars. Talia took them from Baba and gasped. <gasps> she paused, staring at the candy bars in her hand. That man made a mistake, Baba. He gave you back your change. And it's not two dollars. He gave you a twenty dollar bill. It was crumpled in between these candy bars. Talia held the twenty dollar bill up high. Zed took it from his sister to look at the scrunched up bill. Baba, I think the man must have thought that this was a $2 bill, but now that it's all unfolded, you can clearly tell it's a $20 bill. Baba sighed. Oh no. I really wanted him to keep the change. He must not have heard me because of all the honking. You guys, we have to turn back and give him his money. Zed frowned. Baba, could we give it to him after our club meetings? Like, on the way back from the library? We're going to be late if we turn all the way around. Talia stared at the candy bars and frowned. I think we're going to be the last ones to arrive for clubs at the library. Baba looked at the kids from his rear view mirror. Look, you guys. What if for some reason he's not there after the club meetings? That's two hours later. I'm sure he's counting on this money to get his next meal. Imagine, he's just about to be done with his job, and he looks into his money pouch to see that there's so much money missing. And what if that money was supposed to be used for his dinner? Zed replied after giving it much thought. Baba, if that happens and we never meet him again, then that means we will forever have his money and we won't even know where he is to give it back to him. Baba nodded in agreement and added, Holding on to something that isn't yours is an amana, a trust. 
His belongings are with us. We just have to return it because this is actually a command from Allah. Allah says in Surah An-Nisa verse 58, Indeed, Allah commands you to hand over whatever you hold in trust to their owners. Talia smoothened the $20 bill with her hands and reached forward to give it to her Baba. Baba took a big U-turn to head in the opposite direction of the library, back to the man on the street selling candies. Baba returned to that same red light where the man was selling his candies. He spotted the man in crutches and waved back and forth to get his attention. Baba rolled down the windows and shouted, Hey, this is yours! You gave me back too much in change! The man hobbled over to Baba's car on his crutches, swinging his body forward with each step that he planted. Out of breath, that man looked to Baba and replied, <sighs> Whoa, you drove all the way back to return this to me? Thank you so much. I still owe you two dollars then, the man said as he unzipped his money pouch. Baba shook his head no. No, no, keep the change. The man looked up from his money pouch and stopped digging around for cash and smiled to Baba and the kids. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you for driving back to return the money to me, man. Have a blessed day. I was trying to tell you that the first time, but I don't think you heard. Oh, here's that green light again. Take care. Baba waved again from inside the car and smiled. Ah, alhamdulillah. What a relief. I feel like a big rock has been lifted from my shoulders. Zed looked at the time and exclaimed, Baba, we aren't that late. I think we can still make it to clubs without missing out on much. Talia felt excited too now. Please, Baba, can we try to make it to the library? Baba smiled and nodded. The library parking lot was filled with parents standing outside. This was an odd sight. The parents and kids should be inside the library participating in their clubs. I wonder what's going on today. Baba wondered out loud. The kids and Baba made their way to the front of the library only to find a sign taped outside of the entrance door. Zayed read it out loud. Clubs will start 30 minutes late today due to traffic. Baba gave Zayed a thumbs up. Oh, alhamdulillah. And we're early today. Looks like you guys won't be missing any of the club time either. Talia and Zed both jumped up in excitement and exclaimed, Thank you for tuning in to this episode. This episode was sponsored by Sister Yasmina for her kids, Zed and Talia. I really hope you enjoyed this story. To my dear kid listeners, on Sunday, March 19th at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, I will be hosting another virtual event. This time, it's going to be a Ramadan Read Aloud. To join this virtual event, sign up by clicking the Eventbrite link in the description box of this episode. Until next time, Salaamu Alaikum!